about the internet of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. We are at a historic turning point. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. Moving the whole revolution forward. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? What? Crypto is here. It's no longer an idea or on the horizon. It's already the reality of how businesses and people trade, move, and manage value. But despite a growing desire by businesses to engage in crypto, integrating digital asset solutions is complex. It often requires cumbersome integrations, has high costs, and involves engaging with fragmented, slow, and costly fiat payout landscape. At Ripple, we built Liquidity Hub to seamlessly bridge the new world of digital assets with the traditional world of fiat. The experience is plug and play, encompassing a single API connection into a breadth of liquidity pools. It offers optimized pricing via smart order routing and through Ripple's suite of products, best in class last mile fiat payouts into global jurisdictions will be available. Liquidity Hub powers interoperability between crypto and fiat systems, bridging digital assets seamlessly. Partner with Ripple for your crypto liquidity needs today. Welcome back to the Java Twin Alps. So, Turf Hours Crypto, let's get right into today's video. 2023, we are going to see clarity for XRP. Ripple, the company, just came out with this ad seamlessly bridge traditional fiat systems with the new world of crypto. That is what you guys saw in the intro. In today's video, we are going to get into the inter Interledger Protocol, Module Foundation, the World Bank, the BIS Icebreaker Project. We're going to connect these together. You can't even make this stuff up. Individuals from 2014 that have been involved in Ripple are still involved with Ripple at the World Bank stage. Take a listen to this. Global organizations joined the Module Foundation to advance financial inclusion. One of those organizations were the Rockefeller Foundation. The Rockefeller Foundation was founded in 1913, folks. 1913. And Module Foundation is working with Ripple since inception. And an organization that was founded in 1913, they know what kind of technology are the pioneers and Ripple is a pioneer in this sector. Ripple has been involved with the modular project since the start, providing technical advice and engineering support and are proud to continue to collaborate with fellow module sponsor members in working toward a more inclusive future where everyone, everywhere, can access digital financial services needed to connect the global economy. XRP, ladies and gentlemen, the new utility token for the world economy, one of many more to be used as bridge currencies, which we're gonna get into. The BIS says there's gonna be multiple bridge currencies but the most liquid, most efficient is going to be the most popular one. Who said this little quote? This is Ken Weber. If you guys know Ken Weber, head of social impact on Ripple, and there, he's also on the World Economic Forum website. And this is Ripple Impact. And we know the Module Foundation is working with Interledger found, uh, Foundation. Built upon the Interledger protocol, Module is an open source platform for digital payments, enabling payments between multiple MNOs, commercial banks, and central bank to settle, even though they may be on different networks. And the Module Foundation tweeted this out yesterday. Uh, they have a little fintech event that's going on. And if you guys take a look at Harish Natarjan and Jeremiah Grossman, uh, Harish has been in meeting minutes. Okay, he's from the World Bank for lead payments and market infrastructure. This is back from 2014, folks. And Harish was here, okay, presenting alongside Ripple, World Bank, the US Federal Reserve, okay? And in 2014, these individuals were talking about regulation, banks, and future of clearing. And number three was global payments, World Bank. And number four, future clearing, was Ripple Labs. This is back from 2014. I just want to show you now we're in 2023. 
Look how long we have come. Ripple has been trying to get regulatory clarity and work with regulatory uh, agencies since inception. This thing is going to be effing massive, folks. This is not hype. This is not hopium. This is purely facts. Patience is going to be rewarded very, very handsomely. This is back from 2014. We're going to fast forward to 2021. Okay. And take a look at Jeremiah. He even worked at uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. He probably did a great job. And Bill was like, you know what? We'll put you in the UN, United Nations Capital Development Fund, UN CDF, alongside Harish. Uh, they're all together right here, right? So take a look at this. Uh, consideration and lessons for the development of implementation of fast payment systems. This is a uh, toolkit from the World Bank, September 2021. And if you guys know, you know, September 2021, they also said uh, XRP, XLM could be like a stable coin, but we're not gonna get into that in today's video. But they did go on to mention that Ripple has developed a network based on distributed ledger technology for cross-border payments. The Ripple network allows financial institutions to send and receive international payments from single pre-funded account. RippleNet allows for fiat to fiat transactions, as well as the use of XRP digital currency to bridge between different jurisdictions. This is very important. And take a look at all these jurisdictions. Ripple has clarity in almost every single one besides the United States of America. It's not a conspiracy theorist, folks. They're holding back innovation because they know how big this sector is going to get. And then talking about bridge currencies, the BIS Innovation Hub. Take a listen to these very carefully and with an open mind. And I want to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Okay, listen very carefully to this. Project Icebreaker explored a hub and spoke solution interlinking domestic systems through a technical platform that facilitates communication between retail CBDC systems. Each retail CBDC system needs only to integrate with one external system, in brackets, the icebreaker hub. Rather than integrating with every other individual retail CBDC system, the advantage of this model is that it can be scaled up to support many participating systems without increasing the complexity of the design. Given the total number of connections between retail CBDC, systems that would need to be configured once the network starts growing. This is on a world scale. Project Icebreaker and this Icebreaker hub is not sustainable. They're going to need private sector fintech companies like Ripple to scale folks. This is such a big deal. That's why for the full network that moves information and moves money between different counterparties worldwide, the only way we could scale up to something that's world ready was to adopt the open internet model, where we use cryptography to coordinate legislatively, and that is infinitely scalable. Below that, we're using classic blockchain, the, the Ripple um, design that supports um, the XRP um, digital asset, is one of consensus, very high volume, so we can use that for delivering liquidity. Additionally, the risk of insufficient liquidity in the desired bilateral currency pair is mitigated not only by the presence of multiple FX providers, but also by using bridge currencies. This could have potential in promoting competition between FX providers and making FX fees more transparent for end users. The daily FX transaction volume is $8 trillion, folks. $8 trillion. Why would an institution go use a different bridge currency that offers more in fees, less liquidity when they have, you know, something else like what we are very bullish on that has deep liquidity, the most efficient uh, asset and the most cheapest, okay? Doesn't make sense, right? For example, if no FX provider offers any service for the currency pair, for example, Selk ills or if FX rate is unfavorable, the Icebreaker Hub would bridge this gap by determining an alternative payment route using an OK as an intermediary bridge currency. Only currency participating in the Icebreaker arrangement can be used as a bridge currency. The question is, what are these currencies being used as bridge currencies in the icebreaker arrangement, which we're going to look into and it'll be on the next video. 
Third, it could reduce liquidity costs for FX providers in that FX providers would be able to reduce the number of currencies in which it is active. This could, over time, lead to efficiency gains, such as the most payments will use just a few common bridge currencies in liquid financial markets as the number of connected countries in the network grows. The potential use of bridge currency or multiple bridge currencies increases. So there isn't only gonna be one uh, bridge currency, it will, over time, increase, more will, you know, rise, and again, there's always gonna be competition, and we've said that since day one. Ripple is not gonna take the entire market. There's always gonna be competition. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I do appreciate every single one of you guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and we will be back with another episode. We started building RippleNet with the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. I think what we're building has, you know, it's solving a real problem. And I think all of the tokens, my advice to anybody would be understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.